Hey guys, it's Phil from Cleveland Moto, and I have got a hell of a value for people who are interested in motor scooters, 200 cc's, over 70 miles per hour. This is the Rattler 200i from Genuine Scooter Company. Yes, that Genuine Scooter Company that's been doing it since 2002 with the Stella. Uh, really cool, just a really handsome bike. You've got the projector beam, the halogens, and the LEDs up front. Very, very cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop the lights on for you so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The front end on the bike, The uh, if we go ahead and turn it on, you can see we've got you know LEDs and projector beams all happening at the same time. Super neat. The bike has center stand and side stand as standard equipment. USB port right here in the front. Uh, go ahead and fire it up. Of course, it is fuel injected, and it is a very, very clean, very good-looking scooter. Um, interesting, these little guys down here, these are turn signals, but for the United States market, these are the ones that come. But when I prep them, I go ahead and I hook up the LEDs on the bottom, too. So this way you've got both the, um, the incandescence for the DOT, and then you've also got those LEDs on the bottom. I just think it looks cooler that way. Go ahead and I'll pull around. Now the same can be done on the back. I haven't done those, but you've got LEDs that are there and they are functional. And then you've got the incandescence for the uh, DOT NHTSA approval. You got this big LED, super bright, super bright tail light on the back. Okay, uh, really, really a neat bike. And this thing is value priced. I mean, this is under 3K. So for a bike that's under $3,000, you are getting a lot of premium features. Um, one of my favorite things is it's got a gigantic or generous underseat storage area. Gas tank is in the back, so uh, every bike does come set up this way. It is very similar in a lot of ways to the Urbano from Genuine, but I like this one better. So let's jump on and take a quick ride. You do see it has the knobby style tires um, that some folks love, that look. So... There you go. One last look at it. We'll go ahead and pop on here and go for a quick ride. Let you guys check it out. I do love the mirrors. I think the mirrors are excellent. I love that they're not just the cheap stems. For a bike that's coming in at a sub $3,000 price point, you are getting a lot of really nice gear on this bike. So I am a fan. Display is excellent. You've got the clock there. You've got your trip meter, uh, two trip meters. Suspension is definitely what I would call firm. Uh, not violent, but definitely firm. Disc brakes front and rear. Again, that's a lot of a lot of features coming in at that price point that is below where you're going to find the Buddy 125 kick. It's below where you're going to find the Buddy 170 uh, fuel injected Buddy. Uh, so it is a Chinese built bike. So you're getting that difference. So you know that Buddy 170 and that Buddy Kick are Taiwan built. So you're going to see the price $3,500 in that range, whereas this is in that $3,000 or sub $3,000 range uh, because you are getting a Chinese-made product here. Now, that being said, it does get up and go uh, really nicely. We're going to go ahead and do that here when the light changes. Uh, fuel injected and 200 cc's. Now... I have heard rumors that this motor in this bike comes from SYM or SIM, and that doesn't entirely surprise me because the motor is a happy motor. Uh, if for you guys who are hooligan types, you can wheelie this bike. It's not even a hard bike to wheelie. It's remarkably easy to do wheelies on this bike. Uh, parking lot wheelies are not a challenge on this thing. The brakes are very good in fact i would say the brakes and the tires are evenly matched the uh at least you know what we see coming out of the factory here they are a chinese tire but it's not the worst chinese tire it's a decent decent quality equipment coming out of the factory 
Suspension is good, and I'm going to just, I think I've said it before, but I'll say it again. The suspension is on the firm side. So when you ride this bike, keep in mind you're not going to get that Cadillac ride that you're expecting from, like, you know, Vespa Primavera or something like that. This is more firm. It's definitely a more firm ride. Now, that being said, there is zero chance. I mean, zero chance of you bottom out this suspension. You could crush the front brake lever. I mean, just go for it. And you will not bottom out these forks. Uh, I've been, I have ridden the bike two up, so I've ridden this with my wife on the back. You know, I'm over 200 pounds, and she's in that uh, one range. Uh, so, but with the two of us on the bike, not a problem at all. And what is nice is on this bike, the passenger does have their very own foot pegs. It's not just an enhanced floorboard or a, you know, e widened. Uh, floorboard for them they've got their own actual pegs and that's very good that really makes the ride a lot more enjoyable and it's just like i said that's a good example right there is when you need it that 200 cc motor is all too happy to give you a little kick in the pants and go 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 uh, nothing wrong with that at all Stiffness of the chassis. It is remarkably stiff. I know that some people complain about Yamaha Vinos and Buddy Scooters in particular as having very soft frames. Or that when you're braking hard, you can feel the flex in the frame. Um, feels like your handlebar is getting closer to your body. And that's not the case here. I think this is really, I think they've done a good job of balancing out the lightness with the rigidity in this bike. It does not feel like you're bending the frame every time you come to a stop. Variator selection, variator and clutch shoe selection seems to be pretty on target, you know, for a fresh bike, for a brand spanking new bike out of the crate. When you do give this thing throttle, it does perform. It gives it right back at you. So I think that the decent choice of rollers uh, and clutch out of the backs, uh, it does get up and go real nicely. It's not over spooling and under delivering. It seems to be a good balance right in the middle. Uh, I feel like if you were to uh, lighten the rollers up a little, you might you might be into that just getting off the line really fast but not having your top end anymore. And the top end is really nice on this bike. I've had an indicated over 70 miles per hour on this, which is fantastic. That's great. Uh, it's weight class. Everything about the bike, when you're riding it, everything feels exactly like a 125 or a 150. This is not the kind of a bike we're going to go, oh, well, you know, it's a 200 and it feels like it. It's not. It's, uh, it's a very, very light, very, very nimble bike. Uh, about the height. So this might not be the bike for you if you're 5'4". Uh, if you're 5'4", you might want to consider sticking with a buddy kick, right, uh, if you're 5'4". This is a bike that's going to be better for people over 5'6". I feel like it's just going to give you a better all-around experience if you're a little bit of a taller rider. And not tall, I mean, not tall, tall. I'm six foot one, and look, I've got room in front of my knees. Uh, my knees are touching each other. I've got plenty of space. And that, man, that cannot be taken for granted in today's selection of scooters that are out there. There's a whole lot of bikes out there, and 200cc plus bikes, where my knees are straight up hitting the, in the interior of the leg shields or hitting the knees, uh, hitting my keys. The keys do have the um, little magnet and the thing on the back for ch closing the flap over the door, the uh, anti-theft protection. So that does come with that. And there is a USB port right here. And what I think is really clever is uh, it doesn't have a cup holder. It has a slot. And as luck would have it, um, my phone fits in that slot perfectly. Uh, it's, it couldn't be more belt, better suited to my iPhone 10. It just goes right in there, and it's it's perfectly fit for that. It is excellent in that regard. So, real big high marks for this bike. It's got excellent acceleration. Very good. It's suspension. At no point have I bottomed this bike out. Uh, it, there's just... It's right there for you. It doesn't feel like a wet noodle underneath you. It definitely feels like they've they've been careful about making sure... There's enough. I've written a lot of Chinese scooters where it feels like what suspension they chose was an after, after, afterthought, and they just used whatever was laying around. This does actually feel like it's suited to the bike. 
The bike does have the off-road style tires. I'm not going to go as far as to say it's an off-road bike. The Zoom is not an off-road bike. They're just not. It's the style. It's what people are. It's what they like. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's set up for using gravel or, you know, grass or whatever. That's up to you. That's entirely your jam if you want to do it. But the, the bike itself, though, it works really well. Keep in mind, five years ago, I might not be saying such nice things about a Chinese manufactured scooter. We just, we wouldn't have had that there. It would have felt cheap. It would have felt like the frame was wobbly. It would have felt like the brakes were not up to the task. It would have felt like the the CVT, that the belt was stretching every time you'd go to hammer it. Um, this doesn't feel like that. This feels on a par with anything coming out of Taiwan or any Piaggio, uh, you know, product. I really feel like these companies, and it could be genuine, saying that they've got their reputation to maintain as well, and they could be specking in a bike that's um, a better build sheet to stay in line with stuff that they have it is kind of a competitor for the rattler though isn't it the rattler 170 and this bike i mean there is a significant price difference 800 dollars between getting the rattler which is made in taiwan and getting this bike which is made in china 800 bucks now they look very similar their riding position is very similar uh that's up to you. That's that's where you're going to decide how you want to spend that $800. But definitely to be considered in this bike, you know, the I'm sorry, the Hooligan, the Hooligan 170. That Hooligan 170, that's that 30, you know, around 3800. So really consider that against this bike and think about those extra dollars between the Hooligan and the Rattler here. So the uh, there is quite a difference between the two bikes. So if you have any other questions, give us a shout at Cleveland Moto. Uh, we're always there to help and answer any questions you might have about the bikes. Uh, we do ride everything all the time, so we can give you help with comparisons if you'd like that. Uh, just reach out to us at clevelandmoto.com. And that's it. Remember to ride fast and take chances.